Welcome to Retro Crisis. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install RetroArch for iPhone and iPad. I'll also show you how to add games and play those games. So the first step is to open up the App Store. And then in the search box, type in RetroArch. Then press enter. And the one you're interested in is this little Space Invader looking alien. And just tap it and then hit the download icon and then just wait for it to download. Excellent, so once it's finished downloading, hit open. And then you'll notice a few little bits updating and downloading, and just wait for those to complete. Now the next step is close RetroArch. There's something important I want to show you. So if you go to your app library and click on the blue folder icon, which is files. If you don't have that, I'll show you where to get it from. Just go to your app store go back and go to your search box and type in files and then press enter and then there we go you'll see it here files by apple that's the one that i use and then either install it or open it and then once you have opened it click on my ipad and you'll notice a new folder has appeared called retroarch so click it once and then click it again and then this is your main RetroArch folder library. This is where all the RetroArch system files and all the other bits and pieces will be. Now, when adding games to RetroArch, you can only access this folder from what I can tell at least. So what I recommend is we need to create a folder where we can store our games. So click on new folder and call it whatever you want. You can call it games or ROMs or whatever. I'm just gonna call it ROMs and then press enter. Now let's open up ROMs and it's empty. So any ROMs or games you do have, they need to go into this folder. So I'm gonna to go to on my iPad. Now I already have a ROMs folder from before with some games in this. Now I just need to move those to the ROMs folder in RetroArch. So I'll just hit the select button, select all, and then at the bottom of the screen, hit move, and then go to on my iPad, RetroArch, RetroArch, and scroll down to ROMs, and then hit the move button. Now, if I go back to on my iPad and RetroArch, and RetroArch and ROMs, you'll notice the game files have moved. Now just remember in future, any games you wanna to add to RetroArch, just chuck them in this folder here. It doesn't matter if they're in subfolders and you've got them all neatly organized, totally fine. But just make sure they're in this folder. Now we can exit files and we can go back to RetroArch. Now time to add those games and it couldn't be easier. On the right hand side, you can see an icon that looks like three horizontal lines. Just tap that, go to import content and go to scan directory. Now you'll notice, as I said before, the only folder you can access is that RetroArch folder. So let's tap it and go down to the ROMs folder that you made earlier on. Tap that once. You won't see any of the games, but you will see folders, but that's okay. All we're interested in is clicking on scan this directory. Now, if you only have a couple of games in here, the scan will be very quick, but if you have hundreds and thousands of games, it's gonna take forever. So just keep that in mind. So that's the scan done. Now on the right hand side, let's click on the three line icon again, and that'll take us to our playlist screen. Now, if you scroll down, you'll notice that some playlists have been generated with all the games that we just imported. Now, RetroArch uses playlists to kind of group games together. So the default kind of playlist structure is it will just group them by the console that they're associated to. I also want to take this moment to just mention that my channel is full of RetroArch related video guides. If you want to learn more about RetroArch and all the things you can do in it, I'll leave them linked in the description and I'll also leave them linked in the pinned comment below. But now the moment you've been waiting for, let's play these damn games. So let's try a Super Nintendo game. And as you notice, the thumbnail automatically loads and tap the game you want to play. Now, I need to show you something very important. Do not miss this step. You need to scroll down and go to set core association. Click that. And now we just need to choose a core that we want to use to play this game. So cores are basically emulators. You're obviously welcome to choose whichever one you want. For Super Nintendo games, I'm going to choose SNES 9X, this one here. Just tap that. And now the game has been associated to the core. So basically, to play games, you need cores, and cores need games. Without cores, you ain't playing nothing. Excellent, so once you've set the core association, go up and go to run. And here we go. The game has begun loading up. And you'll notice on screen, we have touchscreen controls. And just to prove that it is working, there we go. Thank you. 
Now, how do we get out of a game? <laughs> and that's easy. All you need to do is hit the little alien looking icon in the bottom right hand corner and that will take you to the game submenu. And here you've got a multitude of options you can play around with. If you want to exit a game, just go to close content and it'll take you back to the playlist menu. I'll stop here now. That's kind of like a basic overview of RetroArch and how to use it. And as I said before, I'll leave a link in the description and pinned comment for loads of other RetroArch guides. If you're unsure about anything, just drop a comment and I'll do my best to help you. Anyway, I hope this video was useful. This has been Retro Crisis. Thank you for watching.